Welcome to the Gleitemann's audio presentation. In the next 20 minutes, you will learn what gallstones are, what kinds of problems they can cause, and what you can do to get rid of them. Gallstones are nothing more than coagulated bile. Bile is the green alkaline liquid produced by the liver, which, among other things, helps us digest our food. The liver produces about a liter of bile a day and stores it in a muscular sac called the gallbladder. The gallbladder then squirts this bile down a tube called the common bile duct into the small intestines to mix with the food that comes from the stomach. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. Unfortunately, with nutritional deficiencies and exposure to certain toxins, bile can thicken and form what is known as biliary sludge. When this biliary sludge forms, it makes it very hard for the gallbladder to get the bile into the small intestines. It's like trying to squeeze glue through a straw. It is out of this biliary sludge that gallstones are formed. Gallstones and biliary sludge disrupt the normal flow of bile, causing three different types of problems. The first set of problems is related to not getting enough bile into the intestines. The second set of problems occurs when toxins, unable to leave the body through the bile, back up and accumulate in the liver and the bloodstream. The third set of problems occurs when the bile, unable to get into the intestines, backwashes into the pancreas and liver. Let's start with the first set of problems and consider what happens when the bile becomes too thick or full of stones to reach the intestines in required amounts. The first thing that bile does in the small intestine is to neutralize the acidity of the food coming out of the stomach. In order to disinfect and digest the food that we eat, the stomach secretes hydrochloric acid. Did you ever wonder why the stomach doesn't digest itself? It's because the stomach has a special mucus layer that protects it from this hydrochloric acid. But the small and large intestine have no such protection. Instead, they rely on bile. Bile is a very alkaline substance, and when it comes into contact with the acidic food from the stomach, the acids are neutralized. If bile can't get into the small intestine in required amounts due to biliary sludge and gallstones, then stomach acids in the food are never fully neutralized. They can cause acid burns along the entire length of the small and large intestines, all 30-plus feet of them. We experience this as indigestion, heartburn, ulcers, and all manner of digestive complaints. In essence, we are digesting our own intestines. The next thing that bile does in the intestine is to emulsify the fats and oils in the food that we eat. Emulsification is the process by which fats and oils are made water-soluble. To understand emulsification, think of soap. It's next to impossible to rinse grease off a dish with just plain water. But if you put a drop of soap on the dish, the grease washes right off. That's because soap is an emulsifier. It's what allows fats and oils to mix with water. Bile is the body's natural emulsifier, and it is what allows us to digest the fats and oils we eat. Without this emulsification process, essential fats, oils, and all the fat-soluble vitamins we eat become very difficult to absorb. Without adequate bile in the intestines, a person can end up suffering from malnutrition regardless of the quality and or quantity of the food that they eat. If eating fats and oils gives you indigestion, or if you have difficulty with food absorption, it could be due to biliary sludge or gallstones. The next thing that bile does in the intestines is to stimulate 
peristalsis. Peristalsis is the rhythmic wave-like motion of the intestinal muscles that moves the food through our digestive tract. If you don't get enough bile into your intestines, you're bound to be constipated, no matter how much fiber you eat. Some people have the misfortune of experiencing alternating constipation and diarrhea. This can be a very confusing experience, but the cause can be quite simple. Without sufficient bile, the hydrochloric acid-rich, partially digested food just sits in the intestines with no peristalsis. Thus, a person becomes constipated, but at the same time his or her intestines are being burned. When enough acids build up and the intestines can't take it anymore, they purge themselves with a bout of diarrhea. Then, with the acids evacuated, the process starts all over again. If you are experiencing problems with constipation, diarrhea, or both, biliary sludge and gallstones could be the thing the bile does as it moves through the intestines is to balance the immune system. When most people think of the immune system, they think of white blood cells floating through the bloodstream but over one half of the immune system is actually located in the intestines. The job of the immune system in the intestines is much more difficult than that in the bloodstream. Infections only rarely make it into the blood, but every day our intestines are exposed to millions of parasites, bacteria, and fungi. Because the intestinal immune system is continually at war with these microbes, it is much easier for it to become overly aggressive and start to attack our own tissue. What bile does is to regulate the intestinal immune system, helping to prevent it from becoming overly aggressive and causing autoimmune disorders. If you're suffering from a gut-related autoimmune disorder, it may be because of a blockage of bile flow. The last thing that bile does in the intestines is to kill parasites and candida. Tests show that even the healthiest person still has some degree of parasitic and fungal infection. While there are many antiparasitic and antifungal remedies available in the marketplace, most of them are mildly toxic and therefore unsuitable for daily use. If, however, your bile flow is healthy, then you have a built-in defense against parasites and candida. Well, that about covers what bile does to maintain the health of the intestines, and what happens when bile can't get into the intestines in proper amounts due to the presence of biliary sludge and gallstones. Now, let's turn our attention to what happens when biliary sludge and gallstones cause toxins to back up into the bloodstream. Just as the kidneys remove water-soluble toxins from our bodies, the liver removes fat-soluble toxins from our bodies by putting them into the bile. If the bile gets clogged up due to biliary sludge and or gallstones, then the fat-soluble toxins can't get out, and they start to build up in the body. One of the first signs that bile is backing up is an increase in cholesterol. This happens because the only way cholesterol can leave the body is through the bile. Impaired bile excretion causes cholesterol levels to rise. It's that simple. In addition to the levels of cholesterol rising, Bilirubin levels can also begin to rise. If they get to be bad enough, you can see the whites of a person's eyes, and sometimes their skin, take on a yellow tint. The technical term for this is jaundice. While an increase in cholesterol and bilirubin levels in the body is easy to recognize, the accumulation of other toxins is not. Literally thousands of toxins and chemicals are processed by the liver for removal through the bile each day. When gallstones and biliary sludge prevent these toxins from leaving the body, they begin to accumulate in the bloodstream and the tissues 
causing all sorts of problems. Dissolving gallstones and biliary sludge is an often overlooked but vitally important part of any detoxification program. The last problem we will discuss that is caused by bile backing up into the bloodstream has to do with immune function. As we said earlier, bile plays an important role in the immune system of the intestines by keeping it from becoming overly aggressive. Unfortunately, what's good for the immune system of the intestines is terrible for the rest of the body. Studies have shown that when bile acids are present in the bloodstream, they inhibit chemotaxis and phagocytosis. These are fancy words for how well white blood cells can locate, move towards, and swallow infectious microbes. Thus, what starts out as a beneficial immunoregulative action in the intestines becomes an immunosuppressive action in the bloodstream and the tissues. These are all effects of bile backing up in the bloodstream. The final set of problems we will discuss is how biliary sludge and gallstones can affect the neighboring organs. In addition to bile acids backing up into the bloodstream, bile can also back up into the pancreas and liver where it can cause alkaline burns. This is because the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder all share the same basic plumbing, the common bile duct. There are valves that keep the bile from backing up into the liver and pancreas. If a small stone finds its way into one of these valves, the valve can get stuck in the open position. If this happens, then every time the gallbladder contracts to squeeze the bile into the small intestines, it can also squeeze the bile into the pancreas and the liver, causing caustic alkali burns and irritation. You see, very alkaline substances can burn us just as easily as very acidic ones. And with a pH of 9.5, bile is very alkaline. Mild alkali burns for a short time in these organs may only result in local irritation. But over a long period of time, these alkali burns can cause diabetes, hepatitis, and cancer. Now that you know all the problems associated with biliary sludge and gallstones, the next question is, what can we do about it? Well, if the stones are large enough, your doctor may recommend surgical removal of the gallbladder. While taking out the gallbladder will rid a person of any stones that have formed in that gallbladder, it does nothing for the gallstones that are in other locations nor can it do anything about the cause of the gallstones. In fact, even with the gallbladder surgically removed, gallstones can, and often will, continue to form in the liver and in the hepatic ducts because the underlying cause of the thickening of the bile and the formation of the gallstones has not been addressed. This is why some people who get their gallbladders removed find that their symptoms come back again as new gallstones form in other locations. Moreover, the gallbladder is not a useless organ. Its job is to store bile and only release it when food is present. Without a gallbladder, bile leaks continually into the small intestines in little drips rather than in sufficient amounts when you need it. Think of it this way. Imagine if one day you came home and found that your plumber removed all the faucets in your house. In their place, he just left the pipes, sticking out of the walls, slowly dripping water. Without the faucet's ability to control water flow, not only would you be wasting water when you didn't need it, but you wouldn't be able to get enough when you did. Surgically removing the gallbladder is exactly like removing the faucets from your house. Another option is to do something called a liver gallbladder flush. 
This typically involves drinking water with Epsom salts for several hours to relax the gallbladder and then drinking a glass of olive oil mixed with lemon juice. While this flush will often result in hundreds of small green stones going into the toilet the next day, up to 12 of these flushes is usually needed to get all the stones out. And no matter how many flushes you do, two weeks after your last flush, you're back to making more biliary sludge and gallstones, because again, the cause of these problems was not addressed. We said at the beginning of this presentation that the causes of biliary sludge and gallstones were nutritional deficiencies and toxicity. Let's talk more about that now. There are three ingredients that the body uses to dissolve biliary sludge and gallstones and to keep the bile in liquid form. They are the amino acids glycine and taurine and phosphatidylcholine. As long as these ingredients are available, bile will stay liquid, but the moment they are in short supply, biliary sludge and gallstones will start to form. The problem is that in addition to keeping the bile healthy, these three ingredients are also used for detoxification. Glycine and taurine are involved in a detoxification process called peptide conjugation and phosphatidylcholine is used in a detoxification process called methylation. Now, if we were only exposed to toxins once in a while, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but in today's world, we are chronically exposed to toxins. As a result, we end up being continually deficient in these three ingredients. Take chlorine, for example. As a disinfectant, Chlorine is one of the great public health success stories of the 20th century. When it was first used to purify water in the early 1900s, typhoid fever, cholera, and dysentery virtually disappeared from the U.S. But there is a price to pay for using it. Chlorine is very irritating to the body, so it must be detoxified. And the only way chlorine can be detoxified is with glycine and taurine. Since we are exposed to chlorine compounds with every glass of water we drink and every shower we take, it's easy to see how our glycine and taurine levels are lowered every day. Adrenaline and noradrenaline are two other examples. These two hormones are created every time we experience fear or anger. While they are useful in emergencies, if they stay in the body for more than a short time, they can cause terrible damage. Methylation is the pathway the body uses to get rid of both adrenaline and noradrenaline. One of the main methyl donors for the methylation pathway in the body is phosphatidylcholine. Thus, the more stressed we are, the lower our levels of phosphatidylcholine become. These are just two examples of how toxins, both internal and external, can cause us to become chronically deficient in glycine, taurine, and phosphatidylcholine. So, why not just take these three ingredients in an oral supplement? Wouldn't that work? Only partially. You see, the body has many uses for these three ingredients. And if you take them orally, they will be shared by all the systems of the body. What we need is a way to get these ingredients right to the liver, where the bile is made in the first place. With these facts in mind, we have created Glitamins suppositories. Glitamins suppositories contain glycine, taurine, and phosphatidylcholine, to help support the body in both dissolving biliary sludge and gallstones as well as preventing them from recurring. Also, since glitamins are in suppository form, they are able to deliver the ingredients directly to the liver through the portal vein for greater effect. The glitamins formula also contains the herbs, bupleurum, peppermint, and chanca piedra. 
These herbs are used to further help the liver detoxify and to help relax the gallbladder so that as the bile begins to flow, stones can pass out more easily. In addition, scientific studies have shown that chanka piedra can both dissolve and prevent uric acid and oxalate crystallizations. Since these are the main ingredients found in kidney stones, glitamins may help support the body in dissolving kidney stones as well. Properly liquefied bile both dissolves and prevents gallstones. It neutralizes stomach acids before they can burn the small and large intestine, stimulates healthy peristalsis, balances the immune system, protects the liver and pancreas from caustic alkali burns, kills parasites and candida, and allows the removal from your body of toxic fats and cholesterol. For more information about glitamins, or to order this beneficial product, contact the healthcare professional who gave you this CD.